Hello and how are you? My name is Mahindu Mbarak and I'm our seventh lecture of creating a complete inventory management system. Uh, we are going to resume from where we stopped at in the previous lecture. As you know, today we are going to do 40 minutes, so I'll start our timer and then to start counting. All right. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to open our project and uh, we start doing the work, okay? So I'll go to my Visual Studio code. Here's my Visual Studio code and the project is already there loaded. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run it. So I'll open my terminal and then run PHP artisan serve. Then we run PHP artisan serve. I can press on this so it can take me to that project. So there it is. There it is. All right. So I'm going to open this is the administrator's dashboard. So I'm going to open another what? Another. Um, I'm going to open another um, another I'm going to open another what another browser the one that we're going to use uh, to log in as as a what as a company owner so he can be able to manage their their what their systems so to do that I'll go ahead and open this Google Chrome here it is and then I go to the IP so here we are so in this browser i'm logged in as a what as a company owner whereas in this browser i'm logged in as a what as a super admin or the system owner so yesterday if you still remember in the previous lecture we stopped at the point of creating a what a stock item so let me open our pdf the one that we can use for referencing so that we should know exactly what we are doing so i'll come to our pdf is here so at this moment we are on this uh stock what stock item okay this is where we are all right so let's go ahead and create a stock item so yesterday we i mean the previous lecture we created this migration this very last migration under migrations and in this migration is no did you create a migration of stock item let me go to our important command I think we did not create a, a migration of stock item. We just stopped at the what? At the financial periods. So let us go ahead and create our stock item what? Our stock item migration as well as the model. So to do that, I'll just simply come to our important commands where I save my important commands and create my command for what? For, for, for stock item, stock item. Okay, and then I put dash migration. So it should also create for me the migration. Okay, I'm going to open my terminal and then I create another new terminal so I can have two terminals. This first one is running the project. This second one is where I'll be running my commands. So I'm going to copy this command and then go ahead and paste it here and press enter. So you can see the migration, I mean the model has been created at the same time the migration has been created. So I'll go to the migration by pressing control and click on it and then it will take me to the migration. So this is the migration of stock items. All right, so let us go ahead and start adding the other information. So the first thing that we shall need is the what? Is the company. Which company has created this stock? Okay, so we shall need the company. So we shall go ahead and say table and then say foreign ID 4 and then I put company. company then class and i make sure that it is what it is imported there so that's the first thing that we have put there so we can also put uh the old person who created it so you can say user id and then we can put here maybe call my phone to specify and then you say created by id something like that created by id so you can be able to know the person who created this what who created this uh who created this um uh, stock item all right another thing this stock item must belong to a what to a category ok 
okay to store category so remember we have here two categories you have a main parent category and then what and then uh, a store category so i'm going to put both of them because uh, it will make it simpler for us to filter okay so i'm going to this cut this talk we should have uh should have a uh, category stock category class so it is another foreign id and then also stock subcategory class because its stock must belong to what to a certain subcategory so you put stock sub category class so and make sure that they are also imported here all right so after doing that the next thing this stock i this stock item or this stock particular record it must belong to a financial year we should be able to know we in which financial period did we purchase this stock so we'll go ahead and put also here financial what financial period we called it financial period because others can use months as i can do use years and make sure it is also imported here so that is uh very important so okay we, are, we have seen that all right so okay i think that is okay now after doing that uh now the next thing um uh okay we in stock item the next thing that we're going to put uh now you're going to put the um, the item name so i'm going to put the name so it's going to be text text and then you put the what the name it should be required also another thing that we're going to put we're going to put its description it can be null and then we're going to put the what its main photo its main photo this is the main photo and then we, this store can have like uh, many images okay so we can put also its uh barcode okay barcode photo barcode okay and then we have something called sku sku or you can call it a batch number so sku is a batch number or the number that we use to identify what stock keeping unit they call it a stock keeping unit that you can use to identify a what a, a, a stock item okay so we can uh, go ahead here and then say uh, sku we add it there because this is the information that we shall create and put in the what in the barcode okay so after sku another thing that we shall put here uh the brand i think i don't know whether we need that maybe we shall need it uh, let's let's say let's put the brand okay and also maybe the model the color these okay these are the size um the weight the weight unit and then the length ah, no that is not just too much okay i think this is enough and then uh one more thing that we shall need here maybe since this information uh is optional so you can say maybe uh, we can give a user to maybe say add advanced information okay so you say add you can say maybe here you can put here a string and then you say uh, more info so this one it will be like an optional if they the company they want to add uh, more information okay more information so that's when if they say they say yes then we can go ahead and give them the place where they can put the length and the width and all those things and the height in case they say they want to measure uh i mean they want to add more information i don't know i don't know that this is not too much we need to record the color maybe this one can come in the description all right let's just keep it simple let's this one come in the part in the description all right uh we list that come in the description someone can put that in, that information in the what in the description of that stock let's keep it simple all right so here we'll put the model uh, the mode is also optional so here we will need an sku an sku and then the barcode okay uh so we can put here maybe generate uh, generate sku so and then let us make this one to be a string so 
so this one will let uh, the system to ask the stock person i mean to ask the person to either generate the sku by the system or not so i can say uh here i can put maybe um default let's just leave it there and make it nullable so here it will like i will ask the user to either to allow the system to generate the sku or they should put the sku from the what from the from the from the um, from from external sku all that they call batch number all right so after doing that the next thing that we're going to do the next thing that we're going to do uh we are going to add um what else i think that's enough information to record about the what the stock maybe you can also put maybe a uh, gallery the stock gallery where they can put maybe the images okay so i can put here string and then put here uh, gallery so this is maybe like more images about of, of that stock of that particular item i think that is enough and that is okay all right so after doing that the next thing that we're going to do we are going to go ahead and um, and add now the quantities okay we're going to put now the what the quantity okay so we're going to put here and the buying price okay buying price so i make it a decimal or can put here maybe big integer and then you put buying price and remove these ones okay so by default it should be zero buying price okay and then you also put the what the selling price and by default they are zero zero all right so then we go ahead and put uh initial quantity not big increments big integer big integer like this not big increments all right so the next thing that we're going to put uh original quantity uh -huh. original quantity okay original quantity and then also going to put here uh current current quantity okay i think that is okay uh all right so what else do we need i think that is enough minimum quantity of course to be zero that one don't need it all right i think this information is enough we can perfect this then it will be enough okay this can be enough okay this can be enough unless otherwise i think this is enough this is enough for us to uh do that to lock the stock so maybe we can put here generate sku so this is when you ask the system to do what to generate the sku okay so when the sk is generated uh this one will be uh generated again okay i think that's enough i think that is enough it's supposed to be generate not generic So he'll ask the user whether they want the SKU to be generated by the computer or they should enter it by themselves. So maybe we can put also maybe update SKU. I think that's enough, right? All right, so I think this is enough. I think this is enough. Oh no, you know we are doing as we are thinking. <laughs> okay i think this is enough in case there's anything that we have missed we shall come back for it and and add it but for now i think this is enough we have the prices yeah we, we have the, the quantities ah that's enough i think all right with that much said let's go ahead and do migration so we'll clear the screen and do php artisan migrate 
so it has migrated this table successfully so after doing that then we're going to go to our model of stock items these are controllers model stock item is here so in this model stock item we are not going to create a what a controller for a stock item so to do that we shall just come to what we shall come to important commands and then come here to employees i mean sorry remove this one then say maybe stock item controller and then we change the model to be the stock item let's run this one and then we come up with a what with our with our what with our controller i run it okay i'll go ahead and copy uh this i'll go ahead and copy this and then come to our routes and then in this route you're going to paste there and put stock items okay all right so after doing that now we should be able to come to our system and add these stock items in the menu so let's add it to the menu uh so we shall come here to the administrators dashboard where is super admin dashboard it is on the brave browser it is here super admin dashboard then you shall come to a menu and then on this menu you're going to go ahead and put our stock items okay so these are the products other than others call them products something like that by the way you can call them products as well it is okay okay let's call them products okay let's call them stock items all right so then after we put here uh the uri and then you say this one will be accessible by company owners and also the company workers okay and then you submit so our our stock item is here we can put it here under the dashboard okay and save now let's go to the dashboard of the administrator i mean of the company admin okay so i come here to the dashboard of the company administrator and refresh okay we come here to the dashboard of the company administrator and refresh now you see the company administrator should be able to access now the what the stock items table which is here all right so we are going to begin with the form now there is a lot of things that we're going to do here so <laughs> let's get ready let's just do it okay so we come here to the stock items okay to the stock items and then we come to what to to new okay here to new uh so here i'm going to come here to new and then we, we fix this table okay but once you fix this table, then you shall have made a very great what a very great progress. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, we are here now. Uh, all right, so come here to our stock controller, stock item controller, and then you come here and maybe change this title to stock items, and then come to what to here. Okay, so the first thing is the company ID. So I can say maybe user equals to uh admin user okay so after i'm going to go ahead and hide this and make this company id to be default by the person who is logged in okay the company all right so after doing that the next thing that we're going to do we're going to add um person who created this record of course the person who created this record is the person who is logged in so there is uh but sometimes it can be edited by another person okay so let us check if um, this form is being created or not so or it is being edited so there is a method called uh is creating okay so this is creating method you see you say if and then you say form and then you say is creating and then you call it on the form uh it will tell if there is, it is creating or if someone is editing so if i come here and refresh you'll see that it is able to tell that okay at this time it is creating so you can use this method to check if someone is creating or if someone is editing so here i'm saying that if someone if this form is being created then 
the created by should be by the person who is logged in so if you're maybe editing it we shall not uh, make this default okay and also the person who is who is creating this form i mean who's creating this product or this stock item we hide it we hide it so, it, so that you should not manipulate the system okay that is created by id that is done okay the next thing here is the what is the stock uh, category so the stock categories can be too many sometimes uh, so we may need to use ajax okay we may need to use ajax so ajax is the way of how you can uh, fetch these stock items dynamic i mean uh asynchronously okay but for now let's um okay i think we should just do it right now so that i show you how you can fetch up uh, uh, items asynchronously okay using ajax because the categories may be too many all right let's assume that the categories not be too many but we shall do it when you're going to do that when you're going to do the stock records because the, the products can be like 1000 so putting 1000 products in the drop down it can become too much okay so we are going to create a method that is going to be getting uh the stock category and the stock subcategory so this stock up stock stock category this one will be uh, automatically generated okay or we can just do like uh okay you get the stock categories and also fetch the subcategory that is also possible however it can be a little bit interesting all right let's do it let's do it let's do it like we first select the store category and then we give you the list of categories that are under that store category all right let's do it so laravel admin it has so it has what to call cascading select so this cascading select It will help us uh, someone to first select an item and then after they do what they select a product okay so when you come here under forms under fields then you'll see cascade select this one okay this cascade select so uh, you first begin by creating uh, an item that you want to select from all the options okay and then after selecting then you say load and then you select from others okay so before we do that let me show you how we can uh, do what we can do ajax okay this is how we do ajax okay so um you organize items and put them in uh i'm in external file okay in an api and then in that api uh, you produce something of this let me show you of this format okay all right so let's let me show you what we mean here all right so we come here so let's refresh this is what we have now so we want here store category should be loaded asynchronously because the categories can be too many so what you're going to do we're going to put here uh select you just write like a normal select and then you put here category okay so instead of uh, instead of uh of putting uh options you put what you call like this you just put uh ajax okay ajax and then you specify where you're going to fetch these categories now these categories these categories should be they should be in a what in an external uh should they i mean it's going to be an, an api response okay so if you come here and refresh now you see here that i'll be able to type in something here but you see when i try to type in it is trying to load this uh product asynchronously but it is not happening okay so i'm going to show you how you can load these categories asynchronously so what you're going to do here you're going to create an an api endpoint an api endpoint 
that is going to be fetching these top what stock categories okay so let's go ahead and do that so how do you create an api you create an api in laravel by just simply coming here i mean coming to your files and then come to and then come to what and then come to to routes and then click on api so in here it is where we're going to put our what our api information okay so i'm going to create an endpoint of a what of uh, a place where i'll be fetching what our stock categories All right, so I'm going to just simply come here and say, so I'm going to create here a route So just simply come here, route for store categories So let me show you, so I'm going to just simply say route and then say get and then you put here the name of the route here so inside here, we are going to put a function that is going to be fetching the store categories and return them. Okay, so I'll just simply come here and open bracket and I mean, sorry, and write a function and then open bracket and open curl bracket here. And then I can put here, for example, die. Okay, so and then put here maybe die and say testing. Okay, so I'm going to show you what I'm talking about right now. All right, so uh this is how you create an api so we are in this file of api and then we are here creating a route so this route is a get route and it's going to be returning back the what the categories by searching okay so uh now to access this route we can access it since it is in an api file we can access this route by just simply coming to our project okay the name of our project let me just uh, our project which is uh on this endpoint one two and then i'm going to put so if you put here the main point it will give you this main store category but if you want to access now the store categories you're going to put api stroke store categories so you see we are able to access the word test i think we are together there all right so now uh to return to return to return to return our data to this to return data to this uh, uh, side, okay, or to this side where on of the form, the data in Ajax way or in a synchronous way, the data must be in a certain format, okay. They say it should be in form of data, data, and then we have an ID and text, ID and text, where ID is the name of the category, uh, is, is, is the ID, the unique identification and then of that item and then the text the what is that so i hope you're getting it okay so now here uh we are going to go ahead and uh, and get what and get uh store categories okay store categories so if you want to get store categories what you're going to do we're going to let me okay since you're going to deal with subcategories let me just put uh, stock subcategories most because we are not going to load again and load another thing. So let's use just stock at stock at subcategories. That's going to be our endpoint, okay? All right. So I hope you are getting. I hope you're not lost yet. So this is the endpoint where we shall be sending back the stock subcategories. All right. For example, now they say here. They say here. Let me show you here. In this documentation, they say that they will be sending you a queue. A Q is the keys keyword that they'll be sending you when they are searching something. Okay, when you are searching something. So if you want to get what someone has is searching, you'll just simply say Q equals two. Then you can put here maybe request here like this equals two, and then you can get the Q. So if I come here and echo and say searching and just say maybe 
as searching queue you see so if i come here in our gate and i refresh uh so the queue is not there all right uh, let me put here what you call request all right i cannot even get like okay i can put up to put here to call request it has to be like this eh? i have to put your request first, like this so you'll see that searching for empty so if i come here in our url and i put question mark and i say q equals to t you see searching for t so if i say maybe some blah blah you see searching for blah 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 something like that so this is what will be sending to us so that will that will be sent to us when you're hot when you're searching something so you have to search and then return back okay so we're going to search in sub what in subcategories okay so we're going to say sub subcats subcategories equals two and then you say subcategory subcategory and then you import it and you say where then you put name you put comma and then you say like you put comma and then you put uh, open curl bracket and then put percentage and then q in the middle and then percentage and then remember these are the what these are double bracket i mean double double quotes okay so double quotes so this one is going to search and then you say get so the task of this is going to search anything that is having the word q in it in our list of what of subcategories so if you come here and say dd we shall be able to know that what that uh, there is nothing that has q i mean that has this information so if i remove you'll see that we are getting subcategories okay we're getting subcategories they are here okay i hope you can see that uh, so another thing uh there is a challenge here there's a challenge here is that um since this one is going is not is not checking someone who is logged in it means that we shall not be able to know someone who i mean someone who has really sent the request so it may end up sending the categories of a company that don't belong to us okay that don't belong to someone who is logged in so you have to get here also company id so if you don't send the company id then i mean we check if the company id is uh, if company id if if company id is equal to null okay then we should go ahead and uh, and what and return just an empty thing okay we return an empty let's return an empty response okay you can say maybe uh, company id is required okay so if you don't send back this will return a json response say response and then json and then say company id is required okay or you can just simply put here uh data and you make you return an empty uh so if you don't send back the if you don't send the, the company id will give you what an empty data so it means that you will have to when you'll be sending the request will be sending the the, que the queue and then you put and and then company id then you can send also the what the company id may be like one so that that's when you shall be able to refresh for the record so it means that now here when uh, we are fetching we have also to include the condition that it should fetch also with the company id okay so i put here where so we put our first where so the first where is the company id and then we get where and then this second where is now the search itself so this one will help not to fetch the data of company of things that don't belong to that particular company so you'll have to send to us the company id otherwise we shall not send you any data you get it eh? so if i come here now i try to search uh let me search nothing now i can see at least we are having some data there so let me put a wrong company id i put this company id you see when i put a wrong company id it means that that company is not there they is, I, I am i'm getting back nothing okay so i hope you can see so this data must be organized so you can put here now maybe you can, before we get this you can put maybe uh order by what order by name in ascending order 
and then we get here so we can also limit okay because it can return so many and then we get those ones we can say maybe it should limit maybe to uh 20 records okay so 20 records like this i hope you are together so after doing like this the next thing that we're going to do we are going to the next thing that we're going to do we are going now to loop through this and then create uh, the data in the format that uh, in the format that uh, Laravel admin recognizes okay so you are going to just simply say our data equals to empty and then you're going to look through these ones okay and then you go ahead and say for each you say for each for each these categories for each categories as this one and then we, we we keep on adding in the data let me let me so we are looping through these categories that have been found and then say maybe as subcategory and then we fetch the data so the data we say we increase we add in this data what in this data array this one we say this is how you add something you open square bracket and do like this and then say equals two and then you open the square bracket then we put here id and then put the value of id and then you put the name and then put the value of the name so this is the response that laravel admin does what does recognize all right so after doing that now we are having our data so if i come here and just dump the data you should be able to see okay if i come here and dump the data you should be able to see that i'm having the data that is required okay you see in that format all right hope you are together so after doing that now laravel admin we have now we have to send back now the response i mean the the information okay so send back the information is going to be response and then you say response and then opens bracket and say it's json response and then you open bracket and then you put open curl bracket i mean you open square bracket inside and then you say data and then put this and then says go to data one so by doing like this means that it's going to get this data and keep in this array and then we shall end up let me try come and search here you see we shall end up with a format that uh, what that uh, laravel admin recognizes can you see curl bracket data equals to a, an array of json which is having id and the and the name and then the id and the name something like this okay so uh whoever we are still having a challenge uh the challenge is that um the challenge is that uh, uh how should i say it the challenge is the challenge is that here we're having you see we're having just let me just dump here this data so you can understand here let me just come here and say echo uh print r i mean pre and then say print r and i dump this data so you can see it properly so let me come here and refresh you see we are having our data which is having an array and the value but the challenge is here that um this name for example fruits fruits can be frozen fruits and then can also be maybe in a, in a category of of fresh fruit okay so i mean uh, fresh fruits so here you can it is hard to know what the real uh, parent category of this one so what you're going to do we're going to override when you're getting the name we should be able to do what to attach there the parent name something like that okay so to do that it means that we're going to come here to subcategory model subcategory model subcategory model this one and then you're going to override the function that gets the what that gets the name so first of all let us create uh, the relationship between uh between let us create the relationship between the the, cate the subcategory i mean the stock category and the stock subcategory so in subcategory here so you're going to put here if you understand laravel you know what i'm talking about 
we're going to put here public and then you say public function and then you say subcategory and then you come here and say belongs to then you put here subcategory by doing like this it will be able to relate the the subcategory of i mean the category of this what of this subcategory okay so if you have watched the videos of laravel admin you know what i'm talking about i mean of laravel itself you know what i'm talking about so it means that on each on each on each is on each yeah time is up but let me first finish this so it means that on each stock item Thing can make noise, my friend. Where is this thing? I hate it. Alright, I think I should say it another time that I should not repeat the what that alarm. Okay, so I want to finish this explanation so we can go. So it means that here, when you're fetching. Uh, a what when you're fetching um when you're fetching uh, a, a subcategory you see this is a subcategory okay you can even access its parent let me come here to subcategory you can access its parent category by just simply adding this subcategory like this so if you do like this you'll see you're able to get the parent category of that subcategory so that is how you make relationship. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come to a subcategory. Now, uh, I'm going to show you something. So you see here we're having JIT's names. So I'm going to override the name function. So when someone is collecting the name, I'm going to override it and just send back another name. I mean the name with the subcategory. Or we can do what you call the appending, okay? The append, let's do the appending. So I'm going to append append maybe name underscore text okay so appending it means that uh, okay so let us first go ahead and do what you call append i mean protected and then you put here append and then you can put here maybe name text so name text is going to be the name of the what of uh, of uh, the, the, the custom name the custom name okay so and after i'm going to write the getter for name text all right so this is how you write the getter you say public function get and then you write in capital letter name and then the next english word you put in what in in capital letter text and then say attribute by doing like this it is going to add this name text in our what in our in our in our in our, in our, in our data of of stock subcategory so i mean that if i come here if i come here instead of putting name i can put just name text so if i come here and refresh you see it is just the same okay so let me come back here now so how do you get this name text we get it in name text this one after putting in a paint we get it from here this i get it so I mean that here you can write anything that you want to work as what as a name text or something like that it can override it you see we're able to add there those words so what i'm going to do here i'm going to check i'm going to so i can say maybe um name text equals to this dot name after so this 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 is the name text then i'm going to check if this category is not null because sometimes it can be deleted okay so i'm going to check if this this category is not null i go ahead and say name text is equal the category name and then i put the dash here or maybe i can begin with the uh, name of the category this one here and then i put dot and then i attach here the what <coughs> You can use brackets then I attach there the what the name of the parent category okay I can put a dash and then I put the what the name of the parent category so I can tell okay uh, you're looking at fruits and I mean we are you're looking at fruits and you're talking about the fruits under this particular subcategory 
so if it is not null and then here at the end i go ahead and return what and return now the name text okay so by doing like this it will be able to customize every time you you call these subcategories and attach their what their 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 parent categories so this one will help on confusion so you see fruits dash fresh produce ice cream under frozen foods vegetables under fresh produce that is beautiful so i hope you've understood this you can pause the video and look at it very carefully because this technique you're going to use it so much okay so after doing that now let's come back to our api and remove this pre tag and then return the data so to return the data just simply say respond return response to json and open this and then you say like i already explained this one okay and then now we shall have something like this okay something like this now uh let's go ahead and and now let's go ahead and now add this into our um, our uh what uh our subcategory controller our subcategory controller let's go ahead and add now the ajax okay so we'll come here to our what to our sub subcategory controller what is it sub i mean stock item controller stock item control this here so let's get the maybe subcategory link sub subcat subcategory link or can say maybe subcategory ajax url is equal to so if you want to get the url of your project just refer to url and then you put here api api stroke this so that's how you can generate the what the url that you're sure so let me go ahead and check if this url is correct so i'll just dd there and then i come here to our categories and try to refresh this is the url that has been generated so you can first test it by opening it and see if it will give you the same results of course it is giving the results so now uh, it's going to be our task to attach there the what the company id okay we can have we have to attach there the company id so i can come here and i put here dot i mean okay after after let's attach there the company id so to attach the company id is going to be the url equals to the url dot question mark and then say company id and then you attach there the logged in user id so by doing like this you shall be able to get the url that has the the id of the person who is logged in so you must put the question mark so this one can be uh, identified as a get method okay so after doing that now the next thing that you're now going to do you're now going to go ahead and remove so you say select and then you say uh stock so we are working with stock subcategory this stock category we shall we shall do it in background okay so we're going to put here stock subcategory let me remove this one and then put here maybe uh, uh stock subcategory okay or you can say maybe stock category okay so uh so instead of putting here aja i mean so we and then we we say ajax okay and then say ajax and then you pass here the subcategory url okay you pass the subcategory url okay so let's refresh and uh do if see if it is okay so beautiful you see when i type a it loads this data from the other side so what does it mean it means that even if i have like 1000 records of categories it will not overwhelm our computer because they are coming from what from the external url okay they are coming from the external url so that's how you create ajax that's how you create ajax or that's how you load things asynchronously make sure that you understand this because it is very important and a very powerful technique that you need okay and you're going to use it in the next uh, things that we're going to you that we shall be using so you have you have a right to pause the video and go back and uh, see carefully how i've been able to achieve this okay i hope you can see that that i can now be able to do what type here for example i say a 
it brings here so i can just simply say ice cream and you see these things are being loaded from the other side of the api all right that's it for now uh let's uh start the next lecture right now without arresting i believe you still have energy because me i still have all right so that's how you do it guys that's how you do it let's start the next lecture have i been recording